Hi there, your computer friend Connie here. Let's talk about the five ways to make your team's meetings better. The first way is to prepare. And by this, I mean prepare your whiteboard ahead of time, prepare polls ahead of time. So actually what I'm gonna show you is how to set up these apps in the meeting before the meeting even happens. So I'm in one of my teams right now and I have a meeting coming up uh, for the month end. And I'm gonna actually, rather than join it, I'm just gonna go into it to prepare this meeting with that whiteboard and with polls and with whatever apps I want to use in that meeting. So I'm gonna click on the three dots. And so once I've done that, you see that I'm into the meeting details and I do have a meeting whiteboard showing up here. I'm just gonna click on it and you see what's happening here is it's giving me an option of current whiteboards that I have that I could add to this meeting or it will let me create a brand new whiteboard as well. So let's do that and let's take the easy way out and add in a template. So now I can edit this template and add in whatever I need for my upcoming main meeting. So again, I'm preparing before the meeting even starts with my meeting whiteboard. And this is as the organizer of the meeting that I can do this. Okay, let's try something else. Let's add another app. So in case meeting whiteboard isn't there, by the way, you can just hit the plus sign at the top here and then add the whiteboard as an app. Now I'm gonna choose a different app. I wanna add in polls so I can ask my meeting participants some questions. So I just searched for polls and it came up with polls. This is a Microsoft product, part of Microsoft Forms. Once it shows that app, I'm just gonna hit save and it's gonna save it as part of the meeting. Now I have a lot of information on my screen. I could just leave it here and then when I start the meeting, I can then create a poll and I can use the suggestions given or I can make one from scratch. But again, if we're talking about preparing and if we know ahead of time what we wanna ask the participants, then for sure we can either create a brand new poll over here or we can use some of the suggestions given. So I'm just gonna use some of the suggestions given to make it fast and easy. So let's say I wanna use this one, everyone on the same page, I'm gonna click on that and then I'm gonna save it as a draft. I don't want to launch it because I will launch it in the meeting. So right now I'm just saving it as a draft. If I did launch it for some reason by accident, then it would launch the poll as part of this meeting um, post within my team's channel. And you can have as many polls ready for the meeting as you want. You don't have to launch them all. Maybe you make five polls and you realize, okay, I don't have enough time for that many polls, um, but I do wanna launch a couple of them during the meeting. So whatever time you're ready to launch them, you just click that launch button and away you go and that poll will show up on everybody's screen and they can take their vote on it as well. Okay, so th that's your preparation. There's other things you can add to the meeting ahead of time. I just wanted to show you those two things because those are very cool and can create a lot more engagement and participation in your meetings. The next point I'm gonna bring up to you in terms of making your meetings better is actually setting up your meeting options. So when doing this, we can do this ahead of time before the meeting starts, or we can even do it as we start the meeting as well. So let me show you what options I'm talking about. So I'm still in that month end meeting uh, where I'm seeing the details and this is ahead of time. I haven't joined the meeting or anything. I'm just looking at it. And so in here I do have meeting options. So I'm just going to change maybe one thing here and then I'm going to join the meeting. We'll pretend that it is meeting time and I want to show you what meeting options you have available at that point. So let's click meeting options. So when we click on meeting options, it takes us into our browser to see the meeting options. And it is for the meeting that we were on, as you can see at the top here. And so a couple of options that are nice to think about uh, and prepare for ahead of time is when you are um, making this meeting, do you want people to wait for you in the lobby uh, or do you want them to bypass that lobby? So it's assuming that anybody in your organization, and in this case, what it's assuming right now, who by bypasses, it's really saying everybody because it's people in my organization and the guests. You can choose instead of that, you could just say only people in my organization can bypass the lo lobby or uh, only the organizers and co-organizers, which means then you have a lobby and when people arrive, you're gonna have to let them in. So it's nice that the default is it is allowing for everybody to join, so you don't have to be letting them in, but just know that you can change that back. Now, another one that's 
worthy of looking at within your meetings is maybe rather than just having the comments area in your meeting it's available for people to comment during the meeting you could have a Q&A area so if you know you're asking questions or people are going to be asking questions of you why not open this up because right now it's not open so I'm going to say yes and then this Q&A option will be available to me so then when I'm starting the meeting I can direct people to the Q&A when they have questions uh, or to comments when they just have comments to make so now I have two places to find information and it's a bit more organized for the meeting so I'm going to hit save to save what I've done so far here now actually there's a couple more things in here that I like to change so that's actually under roles and roles is a place where you can decide who can present during your meeting so do you want to allow it do you want to have it so that anybody in the meeting can present or do you want to restrict that so that only specific people or the organizers can present so I'll just say organizers only. And then the last option that's worthy of probably turning on a lot of times is deciding whether you want to transcribe that meeting. So rather than making your own notes for the meeting and then having to distribute them afterwards, why not have the meeting transcribed? And so how that happens is you have to record the meeting and once the recording has been generated, you can then hit the transcribe button and the AI behind all of this will give you the transcription for the meeting. And if you don't like how it turns out because there's too much, you know, interchatter, you can always take whatever transcription you get from that meeting and dump it into ChatGPT and just tell it to clean it up so that you have nice sentences and paragraphs laid out for what happened in the meeting. So a couple of ideas to make your meeting life a little bit easier. So I'm going to turn record and transcribe on and then save. Okay, now I'm gonna join the meeting so I can show you my next tips in making your meetings better once you've joined. So I'm gonna hit the join button here and notice by the way, um, at the top of our meeting, it says recording has started, so that means I can transcribe later. And then it also have, it has a Q&A button for the Q&A that I set up and it has a polls button for the polls that I set up ahead of time that I can launch at any point during this meeting. Okay, now this next tip is about you sharing your screen. And when you share your screen, you have the ability to annotate whatever's on your screen. So use your annotation buttons or annotation toolbar at the top of your screen as you're sharing. All right, I'm just gonna revisit one of those options I had you turn on, and that is the Q&A option. During the meeting, if you're encouraging people to use this, you're having them click on Q&A, and then they have the ability now to start a discussion. They can ask any question and post that question, and then other people in the meeting can actually respond to it. So they just respond as if they were using the comment by using the comment feature underneath that question. And you even had the option of giving the emojis like the thumbs up and all that kind of stuff to questions as well. But this creates a nice neat area for that Q&A discussion that is separate from the chat area. So that's a tip for you. My last tip for today on how to make your team's meeting better is within the people area. So once you're in a meeting and you go to people, you of course can uh, invite any other people into that meeting that you wish to, hovering on their name and requesting them to join. But that's not actually the tip. Let's, the tip is actually by going to the three dots beside participants, you have an option to lock the meeting. So if you say, hey guys, we're gonna try and get together at this time and let's really try and be on time for these meetings to enforce that promptness for everybody, you can lock the meeting or you might wanna lock the meeting for security reasons so that nobody joins unsuspectingly, right? So let's, let's click on lock the meeting and it's giving us the warning that no one else can join, but anybody that was invited could still access the meeting chat. They'll see, what, they'll see it in the team right? But they just can't join the live meetings, what this is doing. Okay, so I'm going to hit lock and it's showing this meeting is locked. And so now if I went to this area here to say request to join, it wouldn't work because even on their end, if they're trying to join, they'll see that there's a little camera button in the team for this meeting that's happening, but they won't be able to join because it is locked. All right, so there you have it. Five different tips for you on how to make your team's meetings better. Try those out. Have fun. Thanks for watching.